The term sediments in the limnological literature refers to inorganic and organic particles in suspension, as evident here, for example, in the turbid downstream waters of the St. Lawrence River, Canada. Sediments also refers to the accumulation of these materials as bottom deposits in lakes and rivers. Suspended sediments and bottom sediments are habitats for biogeochemically active microbiomes, that is, species-rich communities of bacteria, archaea, microbial eukaryotes, and associated viruses. Sediments are a diverse mixture of materials from the atmosphere, the land, and within lake processes. These materials include dust particles from the atmosphere, mineral particles washed in from the catchment, organic matter in various states of degradation, biogenic mineral particles containing silica or carbonates, and microplastics and other pollutants. The pore waters of bottom sediments typically show large solute gradients down through the sediment profile. These are due to variations in microbial processes with depth and the biogeochemical transformation of sediments referred to as diagenesis. These changes occur most rapidly in the surface strata where both oxygen supply and labile organic matter concentrations are highest. Burrowing animals, such as coronamids, accelerate these biogeochemical transformations that are taking place in the sediments, and they do so by way of two mechanisms, bioturbation, that is physical disturbance, and bioirrigation, aerating currents that are created by the animals. Sediment particles continuously sink to the bottom and accumulate on lake and river beds. But fluxes of particles and dissolved materials also occur from the bottom sediments back into the water column. In lakes, particle resuspension occurs mostly by inshore waves, which means that fine sediments can only accumulate offshore below the effects of wave action. In rivers, there is a continuous interplay between erosion, transport, and sediment deposition, and this depends on water velocity and particle size. Large amounts of sediments bed load are resuspended and pushed downstream by the water flowing over the riverbed, especially during peak flows. Dissolved materials, including major ions and nutrients, diffuse out from the pore waters of the bottom sediments into the overlying lake water. And these molecules pass through sublayers, collectively called the benthic boundary layer. In situ microelectrode studies on this layering have been conducted in Lake Biwa by Professor Michio Kumagai and his team. This is Lake Biwa, is the largest and the oldest in Japan. Um, we are in North Basin. This is a, a large part of the lake, and uh, we measure the currents, waves, and uh, water qualities, and uh, so almost uh, uh, 40 years. These studies have shown how oxygen levels can fall to near zero values in the benthic boundary layer just above the sediments, and this potentially leading to phosphorus release and nutrient enrichment of the lake. Four types of microbiomes are associated with sediments. The first of these is the microbial community associated with suspended sediments. These aggregates are complex mixtures of organic and inorganic materials. The particles contain diverse microhabitats that differ in oxygen and other conditions, favoring diverse microbes and diverse microbial functions. The second category of sediment microbiomes is that of photosynthetic biofilms and microbial mats. These are complex microbial assemblages where the cells are embedded in a porous extracellular matrix of polysaccharides, proteins and other compounds called the matrixome. Phototrophs such as cyanobacteria and diatoms 
occur in combination with numerous other microbes, and there can be strong vertical gradients in species and function. Some of the most prolific biofilms occur in some of the world's most extreme environments, such as lakes and streams in the polar regions. These map communities show variations in metabolic activity over the 24-hour cycle, as illustrated here by diurnal changes in pH in the microbial mat of a geothermal spring. Biofilms often occur over the rocks and stream and river ecosystems, also called periphyton. These range from thick algal mats to thin, slippery films. However, much of the microbial activity in rivers and streams occurs out of sight by the microbiome of the hyperaic zone. This subsurface zone receives groundwater and it exchanges water vertically and laterally with the stream channel. The microbiome of the hyperaic zone plays a major role in stream biogeochemistry. The bottom sediments of lakes and rivers contain the fourth type of aquatic microbiome. In these habitats, bacterial cell concentrations and activity may be a thousand times higher than in the overlying water. The microbial communities are dominated by bacteria, as in these five lakes in Switzerland with different trophic states. The relative abundance of archaea can increase with organic enrichment and also with depth in the sediment, and so this results in lower bacteria to archaea ratios with sediment depth. These changes down the sediment profile reflect the distribution of microbial processes. And this in turn is related to the energy ladder of available oxidants. Large quantities of organic matter are degraded under anaerobic conditions through biological methane production in the sediments. This mostly occurs through two different pathways, one via acetate and the other via hydrogen. This methane can then be emitted to the atmosphere via three mechanisms. Firstly, by ebullition, that is, bubbling. Secondly, by mixing into surface waters and then molecular diffusion across the water-air interface. And thirdly, by transport through emergent plants from the roots to leaves and out into the air. Human activities have the potential to greatly alter inland water ecosystems through multiple effects on sediment processes. These effects include impacts by dams, especially by sediment retention, land use affecting sediment and nutrient loading, and climate change with diverse effects, including mobilization of sediments and metals by forest fires and increased runoff. The future state of inland waters will depend on our ability to manage these impacts on sediment processes. Mm -hmm.